participate. That's why I, I didn't do it. Ready? Okay, anytime. Go ahead. Good morning, everyone. This is John Wallace. I'm the host of What's Going On, which is a show about the people, events, and issues affecting us here in the Columbia County, Greene County area, and beyond. If you'd like me to dedicate a show to a particular issue, or if you'd like to be interviewed on a topic of interest to the community, just call the radio station here in Hudson at 828-5008. That's 828-5008. I know that many of the people who listen to this show at one time or another have become frustrated with some of the decisions their local school board or the school superintendent may have made and have asked the question, what the heck are they thinking? Well, unfortunately, many of the local school district taxpayers don't get involved with school district issues uh, or school board meetings for any number of reasons. You know, the usual, it's too busy, or it's uh, the rerun of uh, Survivors on tonight. Can't make the meeting. However, I have two guests with me today uh, who did decide to get involved in their local school board, and uh, they found out some very interesting uh, information about the school district, how they operate, that may surprise you. Uh, Mr. Wayne Coe uh, and Mr. Steve Gilger, Gilder, both, yeah. Gilder, are both uh, taxpayers in the Chatham School District, and they have some very interesting things to say. A lot of it has to do with, uh, I, I guess, to say what actually got you involved and made you uh, angry enough, maybe? That could that be a word that says, what's going on? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to that school board meeting and find out what's going on. How did you get started? <laughs> <laughs> Steve, Steve, Steve's ready for this one. He was practicing on the way. Oh, okay. I got... I, I'm an artist. Um, and a parent of three honors students. You also have a website, right? Wayneco.com. Wayneco.com for my art. Right. And as far as my school activism, Chatham-NY-Watchdogs.com, um, which was founded partly because of uh, Saugerty's Watchdog dot com, which was overlooking our fine superintendent's uh, previous efforts in Saugerties. Oh, okay. So, uh, maybe we could talk about the consolidation. That's like, was big news. You mean school closings? Yes. Let's talk about school closings. Yeah, Let's, we don't like to use the word consolidation because... That's what we, they use? Yeah, that's what they use, okay. and that means nothing. It's called a okay. euphemism. It takes the teeth out of what it is. It's school closing. They want to okay. close a the building. building. They want to close the middle school, which is a great old building and it's a great location. And it's the... It is the National School of Character. It is the best middle school in the nation. They went and they had three buildings to choose from. And instead of choosing the MED, which is out of the way, inferior in build, that would have removed 500 children from an area with one method of egress and put them in the safer building, which would have reduced the bond to a fraction of what it was, they picked the most valuable school and real estate in the district. <laughs> they picked the safest located building. They picked the best middle school in the nation to close because it drove spending on, uh, on this giant bond. Uh, it, it, it's just crazy. And then if you go to, down to why, why are schools being closed across the United States, then you have to get into the school tax system. And it's not that complicated. It's, it's complicated when you look at it for the materials they send. Because things are mislabeled. Because they fractionate every item to where you, you don't have any idea what the big numbers are, what it's about. So they designed they design the system so that if you wanted to get involved and go down to the it's school opaque. budget meeting... It's opaque. You, can't, you, don't, know you don't know what they're talking about. Um, people tell me, when I talk to neighbors, that they visited school board meetings and that they're horrible, horrible. Um, I, I think they're incredibly interesting. First, you have to understand that the school board is in the pocket of the union. That the schools, all the schools in New York State, are union facilities. Our school, for instance, as an example, has four unions. It has the principal's union, it has the teacher's union, it has the bus union, and it has the service it, provider's union. Administrator's union. They represent 97% of the people in the building. The only couple handfuls of people who aren't are highly paid financial people from the state. The superintendent, the business manager, the treasurer. So, so when you walk in, you're walking into a union building, and yet that is always kept very low profile. Oh, they had a fit when I brought up the uh, public 
information, uh, they, they, they had a fit about when I brought up the public information about the superintendent's salary. What, was the, what is the superintendent's salary, Steve? Well, it's a little, little hard to find, but basically you can go on to a site called Sun, Sunshine New York. You can also find it in the budget. It's printed in plain English. And it seems to me we came up a couple of years ago with a number of 219,000. It's now 238,000. 70,000 dollars in benefits, 160 some odd thousand uh, pay package. And we only have 1,150 students? Yes. They, they love to hit, I'll call them the bullet points, declining enrollment, fiscal cliff, no tax impact, let's close the school building. But if you look at it, <laughs> it's like everything. It's rigged, it's subject to statistical analysis, and, and they don't give you the information. When they came after the Chatham Middle School, they didn't bother to mention there was $5 million in debt on the building. Just on the middle school. That so, doesn't include the other two schools. So we would be paying for this building to educate our kids for years to come, uh, and they would be giving it away to whoever. It'd be empty. The other thing they didn't bother to mention was the value of the building. They have a thing called an assessment of their assets, which is listed in the budget. It's 12, it ends up being that the Chatham Middle School, if you take a third of it, is worth 12, 13 million dollars on paper as an insured asset. Now that's what the tax, that's a taxpayer owned building. You gotta remember that the taxpayer public owns, owns that, that, building, that building. And it boils down to nine union installed school board members are supposed to be given the power without any public input. <laughs> you know, supposedly they're publicly elected. We'll get into that next. But they claim they have the power to shut down any building, to basically privatize and give away any public asset, which is exactly the process we've been seeing for the past 40 years with the very rich. It's, it's wrong. Well, I, I'm gonna just make a comment. If it wasn't for you, you two guys getting involved, uh, that school would probably be closed now. Yeah, uh, would, pretty close to it. Yeah, I'd probably go along with that. Yeah. It, it was a very interesting project, you know, bringing the information to the public, right, and asking questions and foiling. The public needs to know that they can foil any question. The board is not going to answer their questions. Neither is the administration. But there's a process called FOIL. It's very simple. You can find it on the, com the website for the Committee for Open Government. You simply send them a piece of paper asking the question or formally. Email. Within 30 days, they have to answer it. And if they don't, you can appeal. Um, it's, it's a pretty simple process once you, once you understand it. And I will make certain that our website has a, a FOIL template on it so that you can simply go to chatham-ny-watchdogs.com and uh, lift that off. You just email it to the information officer at Chatham, that's Brian Simon, um, but every school has an information officer who will take your question. Have you ever decided to uh, foil your own name? To find out what, what has been said about you, what memos have been passed about you? Well, that's, that's a very... It's an interesting idea. It's an interesting question. I did foil exactly that because okay. a letter was sent out, a public letter, um, calling me a relentless liar and character assassinator. It was a defamatory email. And they, per the law, had to give me all of the school board members who signed off on it. Adam Charbonneau, the... Communications director. Let's take this, a moment on Adam this, Charbonneau. This spin, <laughs> this this is spin master. It's not like you guys are uh, excited about this. I, well, no, it's ridiculous. I it's know. It's superintendent unbelievable. I mean, and, and, and if I look at why. Who know, is he? Who is, the, what does he do? The press, the press has come after me, too. The, the basic thing is that you know, the press is, is, is a commercial press. And, and the, the, you mean the, the local paper? Correct. Okay. You know, any of them. They make money off advertising, so they're ultimately inter interested in what the money wants. They don't, they're not going to represent the public. Who, if you go against what the money wants, closing schools to guarantee what's basically a corporate welfare system. New York State school tax, if you look at it, has this built-in kind of, and, and it's all legal. Totally legal. Well, but they it, make it legal gosh. with their own laws. Exactly. Yeah. But it, it looks like a corporate welfare system to me. Basically, the unions get paid 31% more for salaries than anywhere in the nation, okay? The highest pay in the nation. 
And in return for that, they guarantee that the benefits, which we presume are the benefits for the employees, the benefits actually go to transnational insurance companies and Wall Street. Nystris is a $60 billion Wall Street portfolio filled with defense what contractors, is, is Nystris? felonious that. banks. Nystris is the New York State teacher's retirement system, but it's, it's going to be true. And how much money do they have in there? All the retirement systems. $66 billion. Billion. In, including cluster bomb manufacturers. Alliance. They have stock portfolios. It's just, it's just the most amazing thing. It literally to the 1%. 25% of the budget is is not going to employees. It's not going to kids' education. Not the community. It's just going to the wealthy. And, of course, this is all written into New York State law because, as we all know, all politicians are ultimately owned by lobbyists and for the 1%. So the New York State tax system is a corporate welfare delivery system, just like cigarettes are a nicotine delivery system. They are an, uh, it is an unhealthy bad system. You're Everyone knows it, but yep. they, they can't figure it out because media. the, the purpose of media currently to know. is to throw people off the trail. And the purpose of the school board, I feel, is to keep people silent. But, but people basically, at, I, I assume, that at some point in their lives decide maybe they have children in the school districts or something like that, and they're, they're concerned citizens, and they decide to step up and run for the school board, and I know both of you have in the past, um, what, if, prevents, if, what prevents uh, you from getting elected? What, <laughs> what, what, well, what forces... This is, this is they, the money. Let me finish the question yeah. first. They, they find that the, you have these two guys who want to run and Loving open the system up and... and concerned and, and, about children's education. Right. Concerned and try to find... So you decide to run. What forces line up against you almost immediately. Well, one is the very low voter turnout. Right. Very low voter turnout. Nobody wants to bother. My neighbor next door says, ah, oh, why bother? It makes no difference at all. They're going to do whatever they darn the well want to do. demoralization of the voters yeah. is, is incredible. But they're also, they've been educated through the years uh, not to vote. But I, I would say the number one thing that prevents um, activist, intelligent parents from getting on the school board is the teachers union and, and, and the unions in general. The unions block anyone who doesn't have one foot in the union agenda. Right. If you're paid by the school district, you have you're a great vote chance for anything they say. Right. Because you have a great chance of getting on the board. You. If you are not part of the system, it's that money. is a taxpayer funded person. So all the people on the board are teachers, retired teachers, retired teachers administrators spouses of teachers and administrators, education contractors. There's only one person I can think of on the board who isn't the one person who voted against closing the school. And I asked him two years later, I said, have you voted no on any other thing? And he couldn't look me in the eye because the process is to beat people down also if you get on the board. And, and who wants to be on a board where you're one of nine and... You know, just steamrolled every time. Being so, on the board means you vote yes on the agenda. But, but the, it's a union endorsement that is the biggest threat to the taxpayers and to the parents and to the students. I say the union state endorsement, is involved there also. The, the union endorsement is delivered behind, it's, it's developed behind closed doors. It's delivered after the last newspaper's printed. It goes out through email and Facebook to all the teachers and retired teachers, and they vote as a block. How many employees are there, teachers in, a, in the school district, in Chatham School District? Well, we, foil, we had to foil that, and it was messy. Uh, the, the total number of employees was 200 and... 250 some odd. So that's a block. If they come out... Get, uh, they get their husbands, well, their, their wives... Sisters, cousins, their and wives, and then also retired teachers. I think it amounts to 500 when they have competition. And look at the uh, turnout for the bond. 481 voted for it. If you're very close to their 500 voter block, and you know they couldn't even get the whole 500 for that. One of our board members is a flooring contractor. Guess where he gets a lot of floor jobs from? The school district. Guess where he used to do lots of flooring jobs at our schools. Now, as a board member, he's not allowed to do flooring jobs at our school district. But guess where he's doing a floor job? Ichabod Crane, right down the road. They're connected. They provide benefits. 
uh, that you can't see that are perfectly legal. It's all perfectly it's legal. All, it's all connected. All the board members are chosen Patronage. for two sterling qualities. Inexperience, oh, yes. inexperience yes. and fiscal okay. conflicts of interest. That is what makes great school board members that they will vote. get the, yes. the, yes. Yes. the yes. union endorsements, not teachers' union. Well, some, union some, some of them, because they're inexperienced, when they get on the board with, with, and the superintendent says, listen, we really got to do this because of A, B, and C, and there's no one else saying we shouldn't do it. So a new person may be well-meaning, but get right into the trap of following. Absolutely. And New York State provides educational courses for board members. And at these courses, right. they instruct board members, well, if the vote goes five to four, you need to go with the five. You have to, even though you're against it, you have to show a unanimous support for that decision, even though they're against it. Right. Steve's right. talking They're teaching, about the, the state teaches the board people to do this. I call it brainwashing of board members. There was a great question. They had a, a, a mock meet the candidates evening. Oh. And Steve pointed out that the union sets it up. Okay, let's It's let's... done after the last newspaper's printed. Um, you go in. Steve asked how many of the people okay. of the 36 Visualize people, this, you guys. There are uh, how many board members were on, top, were on the we have, stage? We have, no, we nine, have uh, six candidates okay there was, and, and we're looking at an empty auditorium except for there were 36 30, people 36 people and in he, this auditorium to meet the candidates and what did you ask i said how many of you people out here in the audience are directly associated with the school district all of them but two <laughs> said that they were directly associated Actually, with the school district the ex School board president raised his hand and said he nuts. wasn't affiliated with the school. And I, and I just laughed. I said, you put your hand put your down, hand down. Mr. Wagner. I mean, come on. It's, it, it's just, yes, voters don't come. Voters have to come. So they, 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 have to, they have to work to, to educate themselves. Their vote makes a difference. It made a difference in the bond to close the middle school. We defeated it. But basically, at all the meetings we go to, there's nobody there but Wayne and I. Right. I mean, the... the the thing is, that there's Except open hostility. There's open hostility to any scrutiny, you know. Especially and, to and us. People don't want. Yeah, people don't want. You know, people don't want to be maligned. Plus, there's fear. Living in Chatham, you have one company, a thirty million dollar company, sitting like this huge egg in the middle of Chatham, and providing bread and butter for 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 a hundred years for the local workers, and. People live in fear of losing their jobs. Companies live in fear. They are not going to say, I don't like something about that company's thing because they will lose business. I've been told this by half a dozen businesses in Chatham. They go, I totally support what you do. And I'm like, great. They would whisper you, Would you go to a meeting? It's like, no. No, they won't would go to you, a meeting. Da, 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 da. Would you, would you go on camera? Would you write an article? No. Would you go on camera? No. It's like a company town, you fear. know, a small town. People fear for the retaliation against their kids. The newspapers as well as fear themselves. retaliation you know. against their advertising profits. So it's, 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 it is a difficult system to fight. You have to be incredibly naive like me. And you have to be... A uh, strong will, too. You, well, have, you, you have to be able to, to go there and actually speak out. All these people have said, you know, you're so brave, you're so brave, as they stand behind me. <laughs> and, I, and I go, I go. Why aren't you? It's like, well, uh, and, and we're not alone in this because Saugerties School District was the first one to get in touch with us and say, "Do you know what you're dealing with down there? They used to work here at the Saugerties School District, and we got them out, and I'm, we're really sorry we gave them to you." Wow. I mean, it's like that's really a ringing endorsement, isn't it? It, it, it is, but and there was no vetting. Right. Of it didn't seem that they didn't seem to vet where she our superintendent came from and why they were why she was pushed out but but uh, i'm convinced after three years that uh it doesn't matter what she does she's for whatever reason i think partly a contract she gets a three-year like golden parachute contract done by her and, own I, and i believe the school board believes that they can't, you know, if they fired her, they'd have to pay her a quarter of a million dollars a year not to be there. I, it, it, it is such a strange 
system. It's like no one represents the school board when they negotiate Nobody represents the people. Nobody. It, it, no. Isn't the school superintendent, though, don't they work for the, like, the Department of Education? I would isn't, say Isn't so. there some kind of a link? Oh, I'd say so. I'd say they it's work not, for the state they and get the corporations. Paid for, but they get paid and, and appointed by the local school board, but their responsibilities... I think it's to the state. I it, would say so. It, now, let's it, talk it, about it's totally the state. But you know, you, you to me, you could go the corporate state. There's a group called There's a group called NICUS, New York State uh, uh, Council of Superintendents, and it's a. It sounds like a New York State Department, right? It's it isn't. It's, it's, a, a, it's a private, private company, company funded by corporations. Funded by corporations it, it for is. advocacy and and entrance into school districts to sell stuff one to of their, the public. It, it's, right. called, it's called Who lobbying. Don't want it. The, the, one of their executives, Mr. Pratt, is a lifetime professional lobbyist. He came from a lobbying firm of seven years and then moved into this. The other is a superintendent. And in my opinion, the superintendents in the state of New York, there's 700 schools in the state of New York, that they are corporate lobbyists for... Uh, computer tech companies, software, or education contractors, for all the people you can see listed on their website as partners, premium diamond partners. You go to their website. Go to the NICOS website. Premium yeah, diamond NISCOS. partners pay money to NYS this organization CLSS. for advocacy and entrance into school districts. And and to you, sell you'd stuff. Think, you'd think you know. You'd think this would be obvious, but nothing that goes on in the corporate state is obvious. And this, if, this if, cool. if if we were to get people to start showing up, there would undoubtedly, just as they did with Ralph Nader, there would be a creation of like an alternative reality, alternative think tanks, alternative media to say, you know, these people are crazy. The farmers emotional. complain to me about what is going on at the school district, but nobody wants to show up because it's a pain in the butt no, to go it, to these know, meetings. It, it's, it's not. It, it's <laughs> That's unless, you're, unless you're driven, <laughs> driven. You, you yeah. know, you know, the truth will set you free. Right. And uh, and information is is golden. And uh, I work for the media. The I work for media. I, I work in the entertainment industry. I'm an illustrator. Uh, and uh, um, if if you said Wayne, what's the biggest problem in contemporary society? What do we need most at Chatham Central School District? It would be a media education program. Because the American public doesn't understand media, they watch TV all of their life. Propaganda they, is a better word. Well, for they it. they think they're educated, but you really have to understand filmmaking. What does a wide shot? You, you have to understand filmmaking to understand visual media, and you also have to uh, understand how language is used aesthetically, because mm -hmm. all media, like this lovely radio show. Uh, is is ultimately subjective. Uh, evidently, it's also a TV show today. Oh, <laughs> <You're> not, <laughs> as you are taping it. Uh, well, uh, maybe maybe just diverse a little bit here. Can we uh, talk a little bit about Common Core? Oh, that's been God. entered into the schools in New York. <laughs> well, here I've got the Chatham Courier newspaper in front of me, and the headline on uh, September twenty fourth, two thousand fifteen. Test results show. Chatham Central School District students scored above New York State average. Well, that sounds great, doesn't it? Sounds very nice. But you've got to read down a little bit here, and then it says uh, uh, they haven't released the whole test, uh, but the results showed that 34% of the district students who took the test were proficient in ELA. That means sixty. Wait a minute. What does that mean? Thirty-four percent were proficient. Were unproficient. Sixty-six percent were unproficient. Now, why? Wait a minute. Why did they word it like this? This makes me angry. That's why I'm here. Because it makes me mad. It, oh, they're lying you. to us here. Yeah, yeah. This headline should say it's spin. Chatham spin is the word, and Adam Charbonneau is the spin maker over at the. They have this propaganda guy who's paid hey, the messenger. The to messenger spin. was punished. They recently voted to take a day of his salary away in instead of yeah. instead of punishing the superintendent who drove it all. Yeah. Uh, they they actually demoted. The forty-four uh, percent. Forty-four percent. Did he tell the truth by mistake? I, I think he wasn't effective in in turning the ninety percent that were against closing the middle school. Okay, on oh, this headline, it says forty-four percent were proficient in math, and I went, wait a minute, that means sixty-six percent were 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 okay. failing math. Yeah, now, I, I think we, we only have we only have about thirty okay, seconds common, left, it's and a, I think you have to come back and we have to come back and talk it. about Common Why Core. Why is the paper wait, wait, promoting wait, 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 it like wait, wait. this? Common Common Core 
What was I going to say? <laughs> Com common, they gave $750 million yeah. to the state. To New York State. I was told the federal by government. two elected representatives that was used to fill budget potholes. 450,000.0006 made it to our BOCES for 23 yeah. school districts. Zero made it to Chatham for my state. No kid. money. Well, guys, thanks a lot. We, we thanks. Actually, we're out of Thank time. You. And, uh, I'll, I'll bring you both back. We'll talk about local <laughs> common core issues. Thank you very much. Thank and uh, all of us out there, we'll see you all next week.